Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. After hours of debate and even a rally at City Hall, the city of Hartford has a new budget. But some say Hartford's budget leaves public schools underfunded and will lead to layoffs. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolforst is live at Hartford City Hall with the latest on this now. Emma? Brent, Sarah, this afternoon, the Hartford City Council unanimously voted to approve their $600 million budget for next fiscal year 2025. But as council members were deliberating, dozens of students, teachers, parents crowded into the council chambers, filling those chairs. And at one point, a chant even breaking out while council members were still in the chambers. Take a listen. They say this budget leaves Hartford Public Schools with a $31.5 million shortfall. The superintendent announced last month there will be nearly 400 layoffs district-wide to compensate for the budget cuts. The schools are pointing to the end of federal pandemic-era funding and what they say is also years of underfunding from the city for the situation they now face. Hartford Mayor Aruna Narulampalam says he approved appreciates the collaboration from this council speaking shortly after the budget was passed this afternoon. But he and members of the city council acknowledge that this budget is not everything everyone wanted. We have said from the beginning that's not a silver bullet. It doesn't do enough. We've done, you know, we've cut to stone in our budget and done what we can from the city side. Um, but we're going to continue working with our school district. We're going to continue working with our new board of ed, who will be um, hopefully seated soon, uh, and with the superintendent and uh, and with state leaders to try to find a long-term solution to our schools. We'd all love to write a check um, that, that that is much larger, and we just we don't have those funds, and we're going to be responsible. We are not going to make the mistakes that we've criticized other entities for making. We're going to be responsible with our budget um, and try to put forward reasonable solutions. Now, an additional ten and a half million dollars from the state and a little bit from the city was added to Hartford's education budget back in the beginning of May a few weeks ago. But school officials say even with that bump, Hartford public schools still face the worst budget cuts they've seen in at least 20 years. Now, the mayor does say that going forward, he hopes and plans the city will work with private partners as well as the state to try and supplement the funding that schools here in Hartford need. Live at Hartford City Hall, Emma Wolforce, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Emma. We now know the name of the man killed in a shooting in broad daylight in New Haven yesterday. Peter Arroyo was found shot multiple times in the area of Woolcut and Ferry Streets. Police say he died at the hospital. If you have any information on the shooting, you're being encouraged to contact police. All tips can be made anonymously. The shelter in place in the uh, Webster Court area of Newington has been lifted now. Our crew there this afternoon saw a heavy SWAT and police presence. Police say someone violated a protective order and that person is now in custody. Information is still limited at this time. We'll bring it to you on air and online as soon as we learn more. Summer like weather outside there today. Boy, is it hot. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now. Rachel, it gets hotter from here, right? Yeah, we're looking at highs that could get up near 90 degrees away from the Connecticut shoreline tomorrow, especially around the north of Hartford. So for Windsor Locks, we're forecasting a high of 90 degrees tomorrow. I don't think we end up breaking the record or tying the record, but we're within record territory. And for Bridgeport, for the Connecticut shoreline, it's also a warmer day, but I don't think we get anywhere near this record that was set back a few years ago in 2021 when it was 88 degrees. But still, upper 70s for the beaches is, I don't know, a beach day for me if I had the day off. 80 right now in Hartford, 74 in the New Haven area. But notice that that number I was showing you for Bridgeport and New Haven does not represent how much cooler it can be in southeastern Connecticut.
Connecticut, and that will be the case again tomorrow. We have this big difference between inland areas and shoreline areas because of the wind coming in off of the water. So storms firing up to the north of us, they end up staying to the north of us tonight, so not a concern for us. But we will once again see areas of patchy fog and some clouds to develop as we head through the overnight and into early tomorrow. But then we break for sun. We're looking at highs 85 to 90 inland and 70s for the Connecticut shoreline. The humidity not too bad tomorrow, but you're going to feel it on Thursday and you're going to hear some thunder too. We'll explain coming up. Thank you, Rachel. 17 year old has been arrested in connection to a deadly crash in New Milford last year. The teens now facing several charges, including manslaughter and reckless endangerment. Their identity isn't being released because they are a minor. 17 year old Julio Gomez was killed in the crash. Three cars total were involved. Gomez was a passenger in the car. The 17 year old was driving. To a Fox 61 follow up now, the East Hartford police lieutenant charged with DUI was just disciplined after an internal affairs investigation. It's a story we've been covering from the very beginning. Lieutenant Joseph Ficaselli is now suspended without pay for 30 days and some of his work assignments have changed. Fox 61's Matt Karen breaks down the new developments. Oh, yeah. oh shut the f up. You got that explains it all. <laughs> what cop? Which Where? East Hartford. In January, state police charged East Hartford Police Lieutenant Joe Ficaselli with DUI. We're going to have a big problem, dude. Don't threaten me, dude. Ficaselli, who in the video claimed to state police he was having a heart attack. Can you call me in the ambulance? I feel like I'm having a heart attack. Told us he wasn't feeling well when we questioned him about the incident after spotting him during an unrelated story two weeks ago. There's nothing you want to say? Did you regret what surgery, sir? I just had surgery. I'm not feeling. Gotcha. I'm out. Do you regret you. what you did, though? Ficaselli's DUI arrest resulted in both a criminal charge and an internal affairs investigation. We've obtained some video of. Oh, Lieutenant, we're not. Lieutenant I can't Ficaselli. talk about that right now. Chief Mac Hawkins told us he would speak with us once the internal affairs investigation was complete. We emailed him. No response. We went back to headquarters. Yeah, I was wondering if Chief Hawkins would be able to do an interview with us uh, about Lieutenant Ficaselli. His assistant said he wasn't available, and neither was our Freedom of Information request to obtain a copy of the internal affairs investigation. Yeah, I just wanted to check on the status of our FOIA request. That just says it's open and pending. We went to town hall. Would the mayor want to talk? It is a police matter, so the police department PIO handles all the communication. No, I understand that. It's just the residents here have a okay. lot of questions about it. In a statement, the mayor said town of East Hartford employees are expected to hold themselves to a high standard of conduct, regardless of the department or position. Fox 61 discovered that Lieutenant Ficaselli was the second highest paid city employee in 2023 making more than $187,000. I'm going to embarrass the two of you at court. I, mean, I hate to tell you, but I'm going to. But it was Ficaselli who may have felt embarrassed in court, as Judge Kathleen McNamara told him, you should be ashamed of yourself. Ficaselli was suspended without pay for 30 days, transferred out of the Criminal Investigations Bureau, and is no longer the officer in charge of the traffic unit. He was also removed from the department's honor guard. Can you share with me any thoughts? Ficaselli will be back in court on June 6th in Rockville when a judge is expected to decide whether to grant his application for accelerated rehabilitation. We also reached out today to his attorney. So far, we have not heard back. Reporting in East Hartford, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Matt. Watch your speed because a camera could soon be watching you in New Haven. City officials approve the use of red light and speed cameras. But there is still more to be done before those cameras can begin to pop up across the Elm City. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane is in New Haven with the details. City officials approved 19 cameras. Now, some of them are red light cameras and some of them are speed cameras, but they're set to go in areas with a history of crashes and also near school zones to focus on pedestrian safety. This is something that overwhelmingly people in the New Haven community want. 
Fairhaven City officials are cracking down on reckless drivers. 19 traffic cameras were approved by the Board of Alders, 11 red light cameras and 8 speed safety cameras. The cameras would be on main intersections and also near schools across the Elm City. City officials picked these locations based on the need for pedestrian safety, recent crash history and other guidelines. Fox 61 cameras captured several drivers running red lights in those areas in the city. The traffic cameras will take a picture of a car's license plate, sending a $50 ticket in the mail for a first offense and $75 for a second offense. Mayor Justin Elliker says New Haven wants to be one of the first communities to put these cameras in action after the state approved the use of the technology last summer. There's a reason that so many people in New Haven are calling for more cameras, more speed humps, more traffic enforcement. Is that, that's because people drive very, very dangerously in the city. We just saw an incident over the weekend where the motorist died because it appears that they were drag racing on Fox and Boulevard. The use of cameras has been argued by the NAACP. It says it disproportionately impacts black and brown neighborhoods. Mayor Elliker says the city is encouraging every community to adopt similar policies to keep roads safe. While in New Haven, we have our cameras very well spread out throughout the city, we also think that it's important for our suburban partners to adopt this type of technology too. While the city approved these plans for these cameras, the state still needs to weigh in. The Department of Transportation has to approve this plan before the cameras go into effect. Mayor Justin Elliker says he's hopeful that they'll be up and running for the start of the 2025 fiscal year. In New Haven, Lindsay Kane, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Lindsay, thank you. Firefighters responding to a fire in Weathersfield caused by discarded fireworks. It happened at a home on Mitchell Court last night. Crews say they were able to quickly knock down the flames and everyone in the house made it out safely. No one was hurt. Officials say the fire was started after the remains of legal fireworks were put into a trash can. Still to come here.